guys and welcome back to part five of the Fokker D7 build uh, and yeah we'll just continue now so we got up as far as putting the stickers on stickers water slide transfers uh, in part four on the wings just behind me and um, I, I rushed the job a bit actually I'll confess I'll fess up I rushed the job a bit and there was a little bit of trap water under the stick as I've, I've um, varnished them in. So there's a few bubbles, but uh, that can't be helped. Can't be helped now, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to start with uh, the undercarriage. And before I can fit the wing up onto, sorry, before I can fit the undercarriage, I have to get the wheels set up and everything, and then put the bottom wing on, and then I can put the undercarriage on. So making pretty good progress, really. So um, the wheels so far are this. Have a look. Think you're in. If you remember, I've tissued the inside. The tyres are made. Uh, how to make your wheels are in an earlier video, but basically it's three discs to apply one of balsa with a little axle in the middle, plastic tube in this case. And the wheels I've yet to glue on, the tyres rather, yet to glue in place. Um, but um, yesterday, I've printed out, I know some of you will know, but I've got a new 3D printer. I've printed out some hubs, covers, spoke covers, and they're going to stick on there. But before I can glue them on, I have to do a couple of things to them. First of all, I want to sand some of the ridges out from the printing process. Uh, it's so shallow that um, you get ridges, you can't really avoid them, but you can sand them out. Uh, I'm going to try sanding. Well, I'm going to I'm going to sand the, the the tops off, and then I'm going to fill it, and then when they're done, I'll, I can glue them on. But um, hopefully they're deep enough to cover up the end of the axle because I want to put on a collet on the end, and then put, stick these on afterwards, and that will cover up the collet. The other thing I need to do is to just hollow this out where the collet goes. Um, Hopefully I, I can do that. Oh, just before I tell you what I've done, if I could just ask you one small favour uh, before we go on, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button down below, I'd be really grateful because about 60% of you, believe it or not, who regularly watch my channel, don't hit the subscribe button. I know you think it's probably not going to make a difference, but all of these metrics on YouTube do add up uh, and they do help to grow the channel and reach a wider audience. So the more people who subscribe, the wider the audience I reach. Plus, I'll be really grateful. So thank you very much. So what we got here, Cliff? Well, what I wanted to do was to, I've tissued it with one coat of tissue. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't have sprayed the green hubs, first of all, because they look a little bit dark. Uh, and if they do look too dark, then I may just give them a second, uh, a second um, layer of tissue. Just going to see what this looks like. I'll just trim around quickly. Now that's going to go on this face, but because it's slightly smaller than the diameter of the uh, wheel, I did I did set the um, I did set the three D printer to the same diameter, but of course it comes in at such a shallow angle. I should have made it another well two millimeters at least bigger and I've got the little hole there. This is the little hole that you access the uh, valve hang to pump it up between the spokes because these wheels weren't solid. This is just a, a fabric cover that went over the wheel. Let's couple the spokes up and make them a bit more streamlined. Now, I can't stick directly to the tissue because it won't stick. So all I really wanted was a small amount of red around the outside. 
and I might have, uh, have done it really but let's just see if I can remove the bulk of this tissue cut the corner there somewhat won't matter as long as I've got some wood to glue to it's a bit bodgy isn't it a bit bodgy cliff I could probably have just run a bit of red felt tip around there to be honest but so this is going to glue on there and hopefully not show I think I quite like the grubby look of it to be honest you can see it's red but at the same time it's going to be grubby being what it is but it's just hollow enough did I show you I hollowed out the insides just with the Dremel what was interesting was was it as I was hollowing it very quickly the PLA melts again so you sort of got to go in and out let it dry and go back in again let it set I should say Right, what I will need to do is um, give this a coat of clear lacquer to seal it in. Ty was this 10 mil rubber, which I cut and joined. I'm gonna stick on with Yoohoo Pour. Yeah, that looks okay. Interesting that I've got a, yeah, gotta make sure I get that. Could be over a dark piece actually. If I put a dark piece on there now, when I put the hub on, I'll make sure that the, the hole in there lines up with an area of black. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit odd because it should be dark in there. There we go. That's all right. Right, I'll do the other one, guys, and then I'll be back. Okay, good progress, guys. Um, I got carried away last night and uh, cracked on with stuff. Let me show you what I've done. I've vel velcroed Mr. Pilot in. He looks wobbly, but uh, I, he's, I can't get him off. He's not going anywhere. Um, while I had some white paint out, I touched in the top of these cylinder rockers, I think they are, just to give it a bit of relief uh, put the closed loop in on the rudder just got away with it that side it was a bit tight <laughs> a bit tight to the end of the uh, fuselage i'll bring it in a little bit more next time this side was different because it was i don't know why it was different actually i don't know that must have been a oversight um so that's the servos connected up I was going to put the bottom wing on first, uh, but I think I'm going to put the top wing on first because I can run the cables down these and through the little holes into where the receiver is. And then I'll, um, if the cables are too obvious, I might paint them red. Oh, the other thing I did, I'll put the motor in. Just picked up four screws, put the motor into uh, the firewall and put the screws in, just dabbed a little bit of white paint on them just to hold it. So that actually the fuselage is pretty much, pretty much finished. It's starting to weigh a bit now, but biplane's got a lot of wing area, so I'm not too worried. Um, so the other thing I did, oh yes, this was all done over a period of a couple of hours actually, last night. Um, dropped in the Aeron servos and connected them up. I put them in with that really sticky double-sided servo tape. Uh, I left the bay open on the triplane and the DH2. You don't, you really don't see them there. If you wanted to, you could paint the servo red. I might do that, or I could tissue across, put a, a little bar in and tissue across all options uh, so both servers are in and I've got connect one connector which won't go any further than here because it's got to come up around the corner 
I've just gently pulled it, pulled it the wire down. There's still a surplus of servo wire, actually, there are quite long cables on this. And they sort of scooped around here and around there, but you don't see them from the top because the cross is on. So that's cool. So I've got all these cable hanging down now, which is amply, amply long enough to go into the um, fuselage and uh, connect to the receiver. When it was originally built, or when, when the original builder made the cabanes, they're a little bit off on one side, a little bit low on one side. Uh, let me just bend you up slightly, I'll bring you off the picture. So the original builder built, built it, it's a little bit off. So I've got to pack one side, I think it was this side, but I can't remember. Um, so the only way to tell is to put the bottom wing on and put the top wing on just to make sure things line up and then I can uh, take the bottom wing off again because I need access for the radio gear and then when all the gear is in and tested then I can uh, put it back on. The other thing I'll, I'll have to do right at the end is to finish the struts. They're going to go, well, here I've got little brackets made up. I'm going to fit, I'm going to fit those, they're screwed in, but I'm going to fit those after the wings are on, get them exactly right. Uh, the undercarriage is, can't go on until the bottom wing is on, so they're ready to go on. So we're getting there. So first thing is to put the, the top wing on and try and find out exactly where the packing needs to go. Now this is a little bit of a jiggle, as you can imagine these things usually are. It's got to go it's something like that. Uh, I've got to be able to see it. Oh Cliff, get your head down there. Go on mate. It's a, I know it's a tight fit. That one's on. Wow look at that. This is the first oops. First time it's been assembled. This is, oops, I might have to clear the little disc there. I didn't think they were on. There we go. Uh, let's just put, put the nuts on there to hold it for a minute. And we'll see what we've got. Looks like a D8 now, doesn't it? Except the wing's completely the wrong shape. Apart from that though, um, let's just uh, bend you up a little bit more. And I'm going to struggle with the top wing now. That's uh, the bottom top wing. There we go. Exciting moment, guys, isn't it? So this is just going on to help me line the top wing up. Bolts are ugly, but it can't be can't be helped. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think the, the bit of packing was on the port wing. I fitted the centre wing cabane struts. Now they're fitted and packed, um, so. They won't be coming off again. And now I'm just focusing on making the outer wing struts. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the little brackets, which I made a while ago. They're just cut out of quite thin tin and the nuts are captive in the wings, if you remember from previous videos. So that's gonna go like that. This was my idea, but I would screw those on like that. And then I've got the sort of front starboard. They get offered on like that. And I'm just gonna bind them, bind them to each of the brackets. And then they'll be the exact size and, and place and fitment and what have you. And then I can just take them off and uh, paint it all up and then I can put them back in and just screw them in and they'll be perfect fit. If I try and super glue it onto there, 
then I can actually take it off and bind it. So I'm just going to bind cotton around and then paint it all up. Cool, that looks nice with the struts in. Let's just run a bit of glue in there, see what happens. See if it'll stick. I just stuck a bit of red tape on that servo, just crudely, and it's almost an identical um, colour. Right, that's that one, that'll fit in there, in there, and in there and in there. I do think that is the one. Right, okay. I've also painted all the screw heads red. So we'll see if um, see if we can get these in. Um, they're going in well enough. I'll turn the model over and get the other screws in because I don't want to get too carried away and find things don't line up properly. Oh, they look very nice in red. Very nice indeed. I wasn't sure what colour to do the struts because I've seen struts this finished in wood, the original wood finish. But to be honest, I like it all matching. And as the Cobain struts are in red, then I think these need to be red too. At least that's what I want to see. Because these screws were a little bit of a tight fit in the holes. The little brackets I made. I sewed them on last night and uh, they went very well. Sewed them and CA'd them, lots of CA, and then just painted them. Being hardwood, I didn't give it any finish, I just painted them gloss. Nearly there, they're quite long, but he's very nearly there now. Let's pinch it up. Pinch, pinch, pinch. That looks lovely. That's just as I imagine they would look. Just very small, tucked away. And I'm glad I put the nuts inside the wing and not the bolt sticking up. It's much, much neater, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. That looks lovely. Can I tighten these up from here? Oh, now let's turn it over. I may be able to maiden this tomorrow. The forecast is 10 mile an hour, 11 mile an hour um, winds. But after that, it's nothing really good for a little while. So, you know, I think perhaps I ought to make the effort um that's quite good isn't it look at that let's bend you up a little bit you can see as well look at this that's very nice very nice so the d7 didn't have any rigging had a cantilever wing made it very strong um Apparently, after the war, several countries examined this aeroplane to find out exactly how they did it. Right, okay, guys, let's fit the undercarriage. I'm going to glue the outers on. Sounds like outer zone, doesn't it? I'm going to glue the outers on when uh, after I fitted the tyres. So that goes on there. Uh, Actually, I might want to touch these screw heads in because they're black. I know I may be being a little bit fussy there. Painted the uh, rear clamps red, but I just noticed the big nylon bolts, which are um, white as well. So 
and the touching in. It's a little tip for you. It was the groove in the clamp was a little bit too um, big, so I've just lined it with one piece of masking tape, and it's taken up, taken it up lovely. Last one. <clears throat> okay. All right now, undercarriage is on. Good. Now, next job is to fit the wheels uh, hubs. I can either fit these next or fit the tyres on. I thought I would fit these with uh, epoxy, so I'll have to just put a peg on there while they dry. May as well do that before I fit the tyres, I think, because the tyres might inhibit the pegs. Right, just gluing on the tyres, guys. I'm using YooHoo Pour. And uh, it should work okay. It worked okay on, worked okay on the uh, sock with triplane. I'm just watching um, Andrew's video of his... Mustang, his latest video, just halfway through, but I'll just pause while I get these on. I'm going to stretch them on so it's. Oops. Oh, oh, I messed that one up a bit. There we are. Rescued. Rescued. A little bit there. It's nothing. Just licking my finger just to spread it out where it's pushed out because it's not worth it. There's a little bit there. I think I'll just leave that to set off because it'll just be a bit of a mess if I don't. Okay, that's the tyres on. Okay, there she is, guys. Uh, admirable addition to my fleet. So this is my fourth tissue-covered uh, biplane. Got the D7, as long as it flies, then it's an aeroplane. Got the Tiger Moth. I've got the... Um, Sopwith triplane, which is a triplane of course, and I've got the DH2 pusher. I'll link to the maiden flight video at the end of this video, and we'll go up and we'll give it a go. It's not far off the size of that uh, camel really, is it? Not far off. Okay, that completes this video. Thanks very much for uh, following along, and it's been great fun, hasn't it? This is the end of part five. And, uh, and it's been pretty good. And I'm really pleased with the colour scheme. I like it. It's gorgeous. So let's get up the flying field and see how well it flies, shall we? Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers, cheers.